Have you ever found yourself in a debate only to be stumped by argument that seems to make sense, but at the same time you feel like there was something wrong in the argument that you could not point your finger at? More often than not, this is due to the argument being riddled with what are known as logical fallacy. These are a misleading tactic in reasoning that may appear convincing,、um, but crumble under careful analysis. Such fallacy present a facade of logic, yet they do not withstand rigorous examination,、uh, leading to conclusions that may seem sound but are in fact fundamentally flawed. So today we are going to dive into seven logical fallacy with PAA. Hi, I'm Xiao Jie Lo. Welcome to What People Also Ask, where I answer some of the most Google questions with even more Googling. Today, we are going to talk about logical fallacy, specifically seven fallacy of relevance, which is a group of fallacy that involve arguments where the premises are not logically relevant to the conclusion. These fallacies distract from the core issue. Often appealing to emotion, authority, or personal attack rather than providing sound evidence. So let's start with the first one. So, what is argument from incredulity, aka appeal to common sense? The argument from incredulity, also known as appeal to common sense, is a logical fallacy where one asserts that a proposition must be false because it contradicts one's personal beliefs or、uh, intuition, or it seems difficult to understand. Instead of presenting evidence, the person relies on a lack of imagination or personal incredulity as proof that the argument is invalid. Everyday example: a person is presented with the concept of quantum entanglement. Where two particles can instantaneously affect each other's state, no matter how far apart they are, they respond, "It's impossible. I can't see how it could work. Therefore, it cannot be true." This person is dismissing well-documented scientific evidence based on their own inability to comprehend the concept, rather than on any logical refutation or contradictory evidence. Historical example: the development of quantum mechanics in the early centuries challenged the classical physics of the time, which was largely deterministic. Quantum mechanics introduced inherent probability into the fundamental nature of the physical world, which was a significant departure from the previously understood mechanics. Albert Einstein, one of the most respected physicists of his time, found the probabilistic interpretation of quantum mechanics difficult to reconcile with his view on causality in the universe. His statement, "God does not play dice with the universe," has become emblematic of his discomfort with the idea that events at the quantum level could occur without deterministic laws. Despite his contribution to quantum theory, including the photoelectric effect, which earned him Nobel Prize, Einstein spent much of his life attempting to find a unified field theory that would provide a deterministic explanation for the phenomenon described by quantum mechanics. Another example is when Alfred Wegener proposed the theories of continental drift in 1912. He was met with widespread skepticism from the geological community. Many geologists were adamantly opposed Wegener's theories, not because of some scientific counterargument, but because it was against the then-accepted belief about stationary continents. This dismissal persisted despite Wegener's substantial evidence, and the theory was not widely accepted until the concept of plate tectonics emerged in 1960s. What is invincible ignorance? AKA argument by pigheadedness. Invincible ignorance or argument by pigheadedness. Refers to fallacy reasoning where an individual insists on their viewpoint, despite being confronted with actual incontrovertible evidence to the contrary. This stubbornness is not due to the lack of understanding, but rather a willful refusal to accept any evidence that might contradict their preconceived beliefs or claims. Everyday example: A sport fan is adamant that a famous athlete never lost again in their entire career. When presented with official game records and historical footage showing that the athlete did indeed experience several defeats, the fans dismiss all of this documentation as errors or fabrications. They maintain their belief solely based on personal admiration, irrespective of the irrefutable historical evidence. Historical example: In 1994, executives from several biggest American tobacco companies. 
including R.J. Rhino, testified before Congress and infamously declared that they did not believe in nicotine was addictive. This testimony occurred despite a substantial body of scientific evidence indicating the health risk of smoking and the addictive nature of nicotine, some of which was known internally within the company. This event is often cited as a clear example of the tobacco industry's attempt to mislead the public and policymakers about the danger of their products. What is argument from ignorance, aka appeal to ignorance? The argument from ignorance, also known as appeal to ignorance, is a fallacy that occurs when something is claimed to be true simply because it has not been proven false or vice versa. This fallacy asserts that a lack of evidence against a position is evidence for it, or that an argument is necessarily false because it has not been proven true. Everyday example, an individual claims that there must be life in other planet, because no one has been able to prove definitively that there isn't. In this instance, the person is basing their belief on the absence of evidence to the contrary, rather than on positive evidence supporting the existence of extraterrestrial life. This argument assumes that the lack of disproof is equivalent to proof, which is a logical fallacy. Historical example, the Roman Catholic Inquisition, which began in the 20th century and lasted into the early modern period, was a significant effort by the church to locate and punish heresy among Christians. During this time, the Inquisitional Court developed a system where the burden of proof was often on the accused, a stark contrast to modern legal principles. The process was secretive, and the identity of accuser could be withheld. The argument from the ignorance was a pervasive element of the Inquisition's method. If the accused could not affirmatively disprove the charge of heresy, the lack of a disproof was taken as proof of guilt. The presumption meant that simply being accused could be perilous. Possession of prohibited text, association with convicted heretics, or uttering statements that could be interpreted as heretic were enough to encourage suspicion and a potential conviction. The Inquisition do not always require concrete evidence that accused have committed an act of heresy. Circumstantial evidence or even public rumor could be sufficient. The practice of the Inquisition reflects broader medieval and early modern judicial processes that often do not distinguish between the accusation and evidence of guilt. The argument from ignorance was thus not only logical fallacy but also a tool of institutional power, where the Inquisition serving as a stark example of its potential consequences. What is the argument from silence? The argument from silence is a logical fallacy where one infers a conclusion based on the absence of a statement or evidence rather than on presence. It assumes that someone's silence on a matter is a proof of ignorance or implicit agreement with some position, which is not a valid assumption since silence can be due to many other reasons. Everyday example, a teacher asks the class whether anyone disagrees with the proposed solution to a math problem. No one speaks up, so teacher then conclude, since no one has said anything, everyone must understand and agree with the solution. In this case, the teacher's conclusion is based on the student's silence. However, the silence may not indicate agreement or understanding. It could be due to other factors such as intimidation, apathy, or even the student's desire to avoid longer discussion. Silence is not a reliable indicator of consent or concurrence and assuming it can be fallacious. Historical example. The term Dark Age historically refers to the early Middle Age in Europe, a time so to be have had a paucity of cultural and scientific achievement, particularly when compared to the period before and after it. The term came about partially due to the perceived lack of written record, document, and literary work from the time which created significant gap in historical record. The argument that the scarcity of written record implies a regression or stagnation in culture and science is an example of the argument from silence. The line of reasoning assumes that if something is not recorded, it did not happen, which is a logical fallacy. However, archaeological evidence and more recent historical analysis have challenged this view, indicating that a written documentation might be lacking. There were indeed regions and period of progress and development during what have been termed the Dark Ages. What is ignoradio de aka irrelevant conclusion, aka missing the point? 
Ignoradio Edengi, also known as irrelevant conclusion or missing the point, is a logical fallacy where an argument that is supposed to address a particular question or issues instead present an argument for or against a different question. This diversion tactic leads to a conclusion that doesn't follow from the premise or argument provided and is not relevant to the issue at hand. Everyday example. A town hall meeting is discussing the introduction of a new public health measure. When someone raises a concern about the measure's cost effectiveness, the response from a panelist is a detailed explanation of the importance of health itself, rather than addressing the specific issues of the measure's economic impact. The response emphasizing the value of health is not relevant to the initial concern about the cost. Historical example. During the 1950s, uh, in a period known as Red Scare, McCarthy became infamous for making unsubstantial accusations of subversion or treason without providing proper evidence. The tactics he used came to known as McCarthyism. One of the most famous examples of McCarthy's tactic was during the Army McCarthy hearing in 1954. When the Army's lawyer Joseph Welch challenged McCarthy to provide a shred of evidence for his claims, McCarthy responded by making a new accusation. He attacked a young lawyer in Welch's law firm. Fred Fisher, claiming without proof that Fisher has been a long-time member of an organization that was a legal arm of the Communist Party. This deflection was a typical McCarthy tactic. Rather than substantiating his original claim, he attempted to redirect the conversation by making additional accusations. This tactic exemplified ignola dio elenghi. Because McCarthy's response did not address the challenge to, the, to substantiate his original claim, but instead introduced an irrelevant accusation, thus sidestepping the demand for evidence and diverting the discussion away from the issue at hand. What is argument from repetition? The argument from repetition is a logical fallacy that occurs when someone repeatedly asserts a point, irrespective of contradiction or lack of supporting evidence, in the belief that the repetition will make the argument more persuasive or true. This fallacy is based on the idea that a statement becomes true or at least more believable the more it is repeated. Everyday example, a company claimed that its juice cleanse is a miracle detoxifier. Despite a lack of scientific evidence supporting detox claims, the company's advertisement repeats the assertion incessantly across various media platforms. The repetition is used as a strategy to embed the idea in the conscience of the public, hoping that consumers will accept the claim as true simply because it has been stated so frequently and confidently, not because any substantive evidence has been provided. Historical example. Joseph Scobble, the Lurinch Minister of Propaganda of Nazi Germany, is often associated with the concept of big lie, a propaganda technique predicated on the belief that a bold-faced untruth, if repeated frequently with convictions, can be accepted by the mass as truth. Although the exact phrase is associated with him, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. It's not found in his documented speech or writing. It accurately reflects the propagandistic method he championed. Gabo's masterfully engineered a uh, relentless string of Nazi propaganda that penned Jew, communists, and other targeted groups as existential threat to German society. He leveraged media, film, and public events to embed this life into the fabric of everyday life, thus normalizing hatred and prejudice. Through the constant barrage of Nazi ideology, many German citizens came to accept this falsehood, contributing to the one of the most devastating period of the 20th century. What is appeal to stone? Appeal to stone is a logical fallacy where someone dismisses an argument or claim as absurd without providing evidence or reasoning to support the dismissal. It avoids debate by simply rejecting the claim as unworthy of serious consideration. Everyday example, imagine a situation in a school where students propose a new method for organizing library books by color to make it more uh, visually appealing and possibly easier for young students to find books. The librarian, without considering the potential benefit or logistic of the idea, dismissively says, it's the silliest things I ever heard, and move on. 
Well, the librarian might be right to reject the idea and might have valid argument against the idea. He did not actually present his argument. This is an appeal to Stone because it rejects the proposal as absurd without explaining why he thinks it's absurd. Historical example: the appeal to Stone is directly tied to an anecdote involving Dr. Samuel Johnson. The philosopher George Berkeley, associated with a school of thought known as subjective idealism, argued that all worldly objects, including stone, exist only in our perception and have no independent reality. Essentially, Berkeley posits that physical objects does not exist independently of the mind perceiving them. In response to Berkeley's complex and seemingly counterintuitive philosophical claim. Dr. Samuel Johnson reputedly kicked a large stone and felt it hard, and felt its hard, undeniable reality, which caused him pain. He then exclaimed, "I refute this," implying that the stone's very real presence and his ability to kick it was sufficient refutation of Berkeley's philosophy. Johnson was not making a structured philosophical argument, but, but was. Instead, dismiss Berkeley's idea as absurd on the face of it, using the physical pen from kicking a stone as a form of proof. This story is often used to illustrate the fallacy of rejecting an argument as absurd without providing a logical reasoning or evidence to counter the original claim. Johnson's physical demonstration did not engage with the philosophical point Berkeley was making. It simply relied on the immediate common sense observation that the stone seems real, which falls short of philosophical refutation but appears compelling at a common sense level. If you made it to the end of the video, chances are that you enjoy learning what people also ask on Google. But let's face. It, P reading PA yourself will be a pain. So here's the deal: I will do the reading for you and upload a video compiling some from PA once a week. All you have to do is hit the subscribe button and the bell icon, so you won't miss any PA report that I compile. So just do it right now. Bye.